Time for the grill and joining us this morning is family therapist Karen Phillip and journalist Angela Mullard. It's great to see you both again. Good um, morning. It seems like a week or so since I've seen <laughs> Yeah, probably about a week. Yeah. Now, um, sure. first up, <laughs> Treasurer Joe Hockey has confirmed the pension age is going to rise to 70 by the year 2035. Now, this is going to change pretty drastically the face of the Australian workforce. Karen, do we have the physical and emotional capacity to deal with it? Um, who wants to deal with it till 70, to be honest? That's my question. I don't think most of us would want to work till we're 70. There's so much to do in life uh, once we can get out of work. But, look, some people will want to stay until they're perhaps 70, but I don't think we can if we're working physically. And, you know, the story here is about us working on construction sites. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think we have the capacity to work to wear 70 physically. I really don't. For a lot of people, this is a cruel stroke, mm -hmm. isn't it? It is, but I think it's necessary. I mean, we're living longer than we ever have. We're healthier than we ever have. We can't really afford to have 30, 35 year retirements any longer. So we're going to have to look at this option. Um, I think what we do need to do is be flexible about it though. So at the same time that we have families, we're flexible about employment. I think at later age, we also need to be flexible. So we need to have consultancies, flexible hours. People have to have time to enjoy hobbies and grandchildren. But it's the luck what of the draw. It's the luck of the draw. Some people at 70 are fit and active and mm. want to work True. and others are falling completely Apart. Yeah, which is what we're going to be forced to do. It. And this that's why we should be kinder to manual workers. I know plenty of people in their 40s, oh, yeah. plumbers, you know, electricians who are already feeling the physical oh, effects so of their job. So I think we have to take it on a job by job basis. Um, but we're going to have to confront it. It's mm -hmm. going to happen. But making an overall 70s, it, I want to know if we can access our super, if you mm -hmm. have your own super fund or whatever, can we access that at, say, 65 now, like we can now? It, it'll change what a workforce is for. Mm -hmm. It will. Elderly people won't. It'll be yes. a different type of work that they'll have to find them if uh, people are physically incapacitated. But I'll have to, for sure. I think also the issue of work making us purposeful. Like, I like the idea of working for a lot of years, not hard, but to do specific things. So I think that being purposeful in later life is also really. As helpful. long as you're not a construction worker. Yes. Or, yes and true. I don't think I want a preschool teacher or a primary school teacher or a hairdresser 70. I don't know mm. if that's even really appropriate. A lot of people say if, if you don't work, you die. You know? Yeah, I think I would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But no one wants to be forced to do it. Do they? No, exactly. but then they, you have to get your finances in order before that's your responsibility. All right. Well, you are the harsh one in the room today. <laughs> Next up, we all know the decision to have a child is a very personal one, and it's a call that's been put into question thanks to a number of recent studies suggesting parents are miserable and they're stretched to the limit compared with people who don't have children. But is having a baby worth it? One commentator was asked that very question and said, parenthood is like losing your leg and winning the lottery. And then went on to a very, very rambling explanation of what that means. Essentially, it's yin and yang. It's yeah. tough, but it's good. Oh, no. Look, if, if a person is questioning, should they have a child, there's two ways you can look at it. If they're questioning it for their own lifestyle, mm -hmm. then I would suggest do not have a baby. It is not the right time for you. If, however, they're questioning it because they're not sure of their own capability to be the parent they want to be, yeah. then that's completely different. But this story is more the first case. Then, you know what, don't have a child. If you are questioning your lifestyle and hard work that you don't want to put in, then don't have a baby. Don't subject a baby. It takes away all the me time, doesn't it? Oh, well, shut up, lady. Not you. Um, <laughs> shut up this one. Yeah. There are so many people who can't have children. To bleat on like this about whether it's... She makes it sound like isn't an investment having a child. Is it worth it, she's asking. Half of it's like losing your leg. Oh. Having a child is <laughs> such a gift. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life. It's a lifelong ode to love. It, you it give is. and you give and you give, and that's always going to be the relationship. Because you want and to. And it makes you a better person doing it. Yes. I mean, it's not all great. There's miserable days when they're young, they temper tantrums and all that. I but love the temper tantrums. Do you? Yeah. What do you love about it? I love it? the smile. <laughs> Once uh, my now our eldest daughter um, had a strip protest in aisle four of Woolies. <laughs> And it was very, very funny. She actually, because I was laughing, she jumped on her clothes. It was very, very funny. And, you know, a two-year-old doing that, I think that's... Did you, did you get an audience? <laughs> yeah, that was an audience. Did they clap? No. I, I, I've got a lot of assistance with it. I look, yeah. you know, there are tough times. There are no tough times. No sleep, okay. very yes. draining. But that's usually the first keep, few years. Keep yeah. your sense yeah. of humour. And then my teenagers, and that's a fun oh, again. That's a whole new... <laughs> yes. Very true. And, and finally, a new study has revealed people would rather reveal their age or the number of people they've slept with than admit the true extent of their spending. With women, strangely enough, like, more likely to financially cheat 
on their partners than men. Angela, are you a secret shopper? Are you a withholder of information? <laughs> oh, can I tell you my age and how many people I've slept with instead? <laughs> um, no, look, I am a bit. I wish that country road in which we would have just pale brown <laughs> bags that you could just pass off as, oh, just a few paint samples, darling. And, you know, and I am the person that keeps them in the back of the car for a couple of weeks before I announce them. But look, yeah, no, I'm quite a measured spender, really. But, oh, yeah. You know, I don't you, what's making it harder to hide is yeah. internet shopping. Yes. Because the career just turns up. It, it does. And it's not for me. It's, I like uh, say random. To, yeah. to the parents, uh, look, I get a lot of couples in with exactly this problem. And it's similar to cheating on your partner yeah. in a lot of cases, where the spending has gone on excessively. So I generally say to people, if you're doing something to hide it from your partner, then perhaps you shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. So if we're if we're overspending, and I mean but there excessively are 50 overspending, cents, you know, I haven't got a pair of red shoes. Yes, yes. true. Why would you want them? <laughs> red. If you can afford to do it, okay, do it. But if you're if you're really working for something, and you both agreed that okay, we're going to put this away, or we're going to do this, or not do that, and then you continually do this or that mm -hmm. against your partner's um, wishes, and, and also hiding it from them then it's, it's just a red flag for the relationship. Yeah. I think lots of women assume that their partners will be more mad about it than they are. Like my husband's never had a problem a with it. Point. And then I'm sometimes secretive about it. It's ne never been necessary. He's not, he doesn't care anyway. Comes with the turf. <laughs> yeah, so yeah it's just another thing to add to the list, yeah, isn't no, it? <laughs> be, be open. Open and honest in a relationship is always better. That's true, Karen. Thank you very much. Great chatting, as always. Deb? I love it when you